This video is going to be the first video in a series that we're going to call Roaming the Open World. Now in these videos and in this series, I'm going to be talking about different things to do in the open world, how to prep for it, safest way to roam. In the future, we're going to talk about how to analyze players, analyze different situations if they are gankers, if they are PvEers, if they're just regular PvPers, different things you can do to make your open world roaming in the Black Zone, in the Roads of Avalon, and in the Mist safer, and different aspects so you can become better in the full loop PvP zones as a whole. Now, in this one, we're going to be talking about three different points. First one is going to be things to think about before roaming. Second one is going to be the best way to leave the portal zone. And the third one is going to be basic navigation for your safety in the black zone. So going over the first point, the first thing that we want to think about is what day is it when we're going out to roam? So are we playing during a weekday? Or are we playing on a weekend? These two different factors play a big part, as well as if there is a holiday going on. Let's say you do play on a Monday, but there is some type of holiday going on and there's gonna be people that are off work. You do need to keep these kind of things in mind because the black zone will be more active. And a lot of times on the weekends, there are lots of groups of gankers that are roaming around because that's what a lot of people like to do on the weekend. Once they get off from a long day of work, they just wanna go out and they wanna gank a lot of players for their loot. So this is something you need to keep in mind that from Friday all the way till Sunday on the weekend times that you are playing, the black zone in general is going to be a lot more populated so you do need to be a lot more careful when it comes to the different type of roaming and kind of the activities that you want to do the second thing we want to talk about in the first point is the goals that you have so what do we want to do when we go roam in the black zone are you trying to pve like you're trying to clear chests you're trying to kill mobs you're trying to fame farm maybe are you trying to pvp do you just want to go out and you want to find fights fight as many players as possible try to get their loot bring it back to the zone to sell are you trying to gather or do you want to do a hybrid do you want to do everything under the sun would you like to go pve and clear chests if a player shows up you're ready to fight and then while you're running around you see a node you have your tools with you and you want to gather these are the different things that you need to think about when you are planning your trip to go out into the black zone. You have a specific activity that you want to do, whether it be hybrid or specifically just gathering or just PvP and PvE. And the last thing that we're going to talk about in this first point is going to be picking your weapon and gear. So if you are going to be with my set, I'm taking a... It's essentially a hybrid PvE PvP set. We're not going to be doing any gathering with this set. And what I did is I brought poisons to take down spike or upgraded mobs. And then I brought some fish so that my health regeneration can be better between clearing mobs. So I can always have my health up. So I never have to sit around and wait for my health to get back. But I also brought some pork omelet. In case I do get into a PvP interaction with a player, I can eat a pork omelet and use that for the actual fight interaction. I have mage cow, I have royal sandals that are unpurgeable, and I have an assassin's jacket. Now the thing with this setup, and a lot of people, if you are new to roaming in the black zone, I will always advocate that this is one of the first type of chess pieces that you take out with you, and that'll be Assassin's Jacket. And the reason with Assassin's Jacket is it is an invis, so you can go invis with the ambush, and you go invisible for up to 8 seconds. Damage will not reveal you. The only thing that will reveal you is abilities that reveal invisibility, or if you do some type of damage, it will reveal you. Another thing is with this one, you can de-aggro mobs. So let's say that you're dismounted next to a mob, and someone rolls up on you and dismounts. You can proc your invis, the mob will walk away from you and you can get back on your mount and ride away safely if you aren't looking to take fights. So you can control a lot of situations with this as well as invis during fights is an amazing thing too. This ambush has a ton of outplay potential in PvP fights in general. So mastering the art of the assassin jacket can be a beautiful tool when you are roaming the open world. And then another thing too is royal sandals. These royal sandals were only 33,000, but royal sandals have defenseless rush and it makes you, for seven seconds, you'll have a movement speed of 75%. These are unpurgeable. So if you don't know what purging is, there are different abilities on different types of armor pieces in the game that can take away buffs. For example, if you had like soldier boots on and you proc'd your wonderless or rejuvenating sprint, if someone had a fiend cow and they casted purge on you while you were running away, and you're within that nine meter radius, it'll take away your run. So you used your run and they can take it away from you and now you have your run on cooldown and you're just a sitting duck. With Defenseless Rush, it is an unpurgeable run because it is a toggle ability. It's an ability that can be turned on and turned off and then it goes into cooldown. But because of its toggle nature, it's an unpurgeable boot. So this one is always a good one to start if you are new to open world roaming as it will help you get away from different types of gankers. As well as the weapon that you choose, let's say I'm gonna be using the Bow of Badon for this roam. It does have Frost Shot, which is a mobility option. Weapons with mobility options are beautiful for the open world whether you're gathering pve or pvp so we think of like one-handed spear we think of gloves battle axe with its adrenaline run we have bow badon who that has the or bows in general that have the frost shot 
quarter staff because of the ton of mobility that it has. It's not going to be as good at PVE, but if you are gathering, you could take a quarter staff, and that would be one of the better ones to take out there with you, like a double bladed staff. And there's different things you could do too, like invisibility pots and undead cape but that just comes down to your budget so when it comes to and now we're going to talk about the budget too so when it comes to picking your budget my set here is only 361k now for some of you that are newer players and whatnot that might be a lot for you because that might be you might only have a million silver or you might only have five million silver or you might not even have a million silver so this is a lot for a set the rule of thumb is the set that you're taking out you should be able to buy that set 10 to 15 times over and that's a good threshold to have for the sets that you want to run on top of that, I do have another video on my YouTube channel called Getting Over Gear Fear. I highly recommend you're watching it if you do have trouble or you do get kind of anxious when you go out into the black zones with the type of gear you're risking. I have a method that, that I use in the Gear Fear video that I use myself and it helped me a ton with getting used to a full loop PvP game such as Albion. The next thing you're going to think about is, again, your setup. So if we're PvPing and PvEing, I brought like Mage Cow for extra damage. As well as I didn't put on a special cape, we probably can just because we are risking 361, but... Uh, it doesn't it's not ma it doesn't matter too much the bow badon i got this one on discount it was only like 100k but this one's 129k and then when it comes to your mount i picked a swift claw because a swift claw is around 115k if i was running a little bit more expensive set i'd probably run a dire wolf if i was gathering i'd be running like a moose or a stag or a saddled wild boar something with carry weight because i'm only going to be pveing slash pvping for this run or that's what i'm showing I'm not bringing tools. I don't need excessive carry weight. So I don't need a stag or a moose. If I was doing a hybrid run, let's say I brought tools with me, I'd probably need like a stag or a moose, a frost ram, a saddled wild boar. Some of those get a little bit more expensive. So their cheapest option would be a stag. But those are going to be some of the best mounts that you're going to want to use for hybrid activities in the black zone. Just because those, what those will do for you is they'll give you that extra carry weight as well as the speed on them is decent. So you can still get away and still take fights however you want to do. And then if you are only gathering, you're probably going to want to put a gathering set on, depending on the tier of the gathering that you have. So you can get that extra yield. You're going to want to take pork pies with you. And you're going to want to take a mobility weapon, like let's say gloves or blood letter or double bladed staff, just because you want to do gathering. And that's the activity that you're going to want to do. All right. Second point we're going to be talking about is best way to leave the portal zone. Now we are going to be in the Martlock portal zone. And if you don't know how to get to the black zone, you would, for example, I would go to Martlock and then I would walk up into the Conqueror's Hall and use the portal inside. But the best way for leaving the portal zones, so when it comes to black zone roaming in general, a lot of these starting zones, like two zones out, are going to be hot spots. There's going to be tons of 4.1s, 5.1s. There might even be juiced up gank groups hanging out in here. What they're looking for is to catch people coming in or to catch people going out. So what Albion Online did, or what SBI did, is they added these little invis shrines. And what they'll do is you drink them and it'll give you two minutes of invisibility. You're unable to do normal attacks and you're silenced and you're immune to damage. Interacting with an object will reveal you. The negative effects will persist 10 seconds after you're revealed. So be careful being revealed as you will have that 10 second silence. Now we're gonna take this invis and we're gonna run out and then I'm gonna talk about the basic navigations for your safety in one of these zones. Another point that I wanna make real quick is something you need to keep in mind when you're invis is let's say we run here, here. Our invis will probably run out somewhere right here. Uh, first off, you're not gonna be on roads. Is that's just one of the things we're going to talk about. You're not going to be chilling on the roads while you're doing stuff. You're not going to be like running on roads a lot while you're navigating the black zone because that's usually where gankers are going to be hanging out and they're trying to catch newer players that are roaming in the black zone thinking that the roads are safe. But for example, if you are running invis somewhere, sometimes like right here or some in these areas, this is where you'll be revealed depending on the mount that you have. And a lot of gankers will stand on the road waiting. So be very careful when you're about to be revealed when you are running invis and running on the road because a lot of times that's where all the gankers are hanging out and they're trying to get the play on some people who their invis is just about to run out. Uh, but we're gonna press the logout button so we reveal ourselves real quick. And then we're just gonna move. And then I'm gonna grab another invis, we're gonna run out. I'm gonna fast forward to the second zone we get to once our invis runs out. So let me just grab this and we're gonna take it out. All right, now I'm just going to reveal myself here. We are only one zone out, but I'm going to talk about some of the different thought processes I have coming into different zones. So this is the, let's just say we zone through here. We just came into this new zone. 
I'm going to talk you through. This is the third point, basic navigation for your safety. This is the, we just got into the zone. This is the road. There's different hideouts. There's a territory. There's a chest here and there's an Avalonian road as well as there is a blue core anomaly that has four minutes on it. So for your safety, the best way that you can navigate this zone, if we are trying to get to, let's say here, is going to be cutting through off the road most of the time. Sometimes there will be gankers hanging out here waiting for someone to cut across. So you just got to be careful. Your invis will last running through this zone because this is the second zone. But I have been, there has been attempts at ganking right here. Uh, if you are attempted to be ganked and you can get away some way, booting back to this portal or to this zone through is going to be your best option. Because once you zone through, you do get a shield and you can wait for your mount cooldown if they did take you off your mount. And then you can remount up and keep running. Uh, we can go here. We can go to this one. Let's say that I want to go to... Let's go to... Well, we're not going to go to Bleach Skull Desert because that is a gank zone too. And over time, you'll start to realize which zones are more heavily populated with gankers. This one's a big one. As a lot of them will hang out here. Some of them will hang out up here. A lot of them will watch the bridges. Bridges are a big one that you don't want to be crossing as a new player. Or in general, usually. Uh, bridges are not safe. They, they are huge on ganking and if they have people in position they can trap you on the bridge and they can kill you very easily just because it is a bottlenecked corridor that is something that you need to keep in mind but what we're going to do is we're going to run through here and while we're running we're going to be watching the edges of our screen for any red names so as soon as we see a red name we'll double back real quick uh, you just kind of kind of like fill them out so if we did see a name another thing too you need to watch the edges of your screen because a lot of times unless they have widescreen most of the time you will see them there's never been a time that i didn't see them at first so this guy's mounted because he has the yellow under his name so we know he's still mounted okay so we have a whispering bow here he is following okay you, you got you see how this guy's following so now what we have to be careful with now is this might be someone who is attempting to gank us so we need to watch him for the dismount while we are trying to get to this next zone. He's most likely not alone if he's just following like this. He probably has a buddy somewhere. So we're just going to keep it running. Going towards the southeast exit that we're trying to get to. We're doing a little bit of circles just to see how he's following us. Just to see what he's doing. A lot of times when someone is following you like this, hanging out in the same spot for too long is a bad idea. That's putting you at a disadvantage as it's giving his buddies more time to converge on your position. So most of the time when you are getting chased and stuff like that, you do need to keep it moving. Okay, so we do have a dismount behind us. Uh, which is weird because I'm right next to the door. Yeah, Bearpaw Ganker. See how he has a Fiend Cow? Royal Sandals, Assassin Jacket. Yeah, the Fiend Cow is what will be used to purge boots, but we're not worried about that. We got Royal Sandals on. Yeah, in some future videos, I will talk about analyzing the different players that you see out here. But as you can see, that guy did have a group. That's why he was following us around. He was trying to see what our decision was going to be. The longer we hang out in the same spot, the more of a disadvantage we are in. As well as as soon as you see a ganker, your best course of action is to keep running. Unless you run into a group of like, unless there's like one right here and we keep running east and we see like 10 of them, then double backing will probably be your best option. But most of the time, you just need to keep going because they're not in position yet and they might be the one that's scouting the longer you hang out the more of a disadvantage you'll be in you just need to stop hanging out if you're trying to get away from gankers and giving them more time to get set up and everything so we zoned into this zone and i ran straight to the east you know we're not i'm not taking this road no no way am i running all the way on this road all the way to the next zone there could be gang squads walking this road. We're running right by a territory. These territories are owned by different guilds. A lot of times they'll be used for ganking as well, or they'll try to pull you into the territory, or they'll be waiting by the territory to try to get like a lock on you. Like this could be a spot that they're waiting if someone crosses through. They could be using this as a choke right here. There could be people waiting here and here. We come out, we cut here. This is a much bigger area for the gankers to cover. So it's safer to roam out this way because there are so many spots that the gangers would have to stand here that unless they have like a group of 20, they don't have enough coverage for this zone. As well as it is a tier 5, you're not going to really be uh, worried about it as much. Sorry, I have stream remote on. Let me just turn that off real quick. Yeah, high stone grasslands. Yeah, so this is going to be a tier 5 zone as well as something you need to look at is the UTC timer. So that, and when this timer is active, that means that the zone will be active. This zone doesn't have any guilds. 
So we're not wor or not any guilds, not any hideouts. So we're not worried about that. But I'm going to run into the next zone just to give you guys another one that we can look at. All right, we're now in the next zone and looking over it. The best way to probably navigate this one is not going to be running this way. We're not, not running towards the Terry as well as there's an anomaly there. Uh, this is just a choke right here just waiting to happen. I'm sure people have ran back here and gotten themselves killed. We most likely are just going to run straight through. We're going to cut through here and we can either cut above the little lake or to the south of it. Either or. But then we'd run through here and then we can cut forward to get to this next zone, which is the one we'd be going. Or if we do want to go here, we'd cut to about right here and then take it that way down to here. Uh, again, don't stay on the roads unless you've been... Sometimes when you've been roaming a lot, you can run on the roads. But the, the best case scenario in general is just to stay off the roads. Staying off the roads just makes it harder for gankers to get you. As well as there are a lot of obstacles and terrain you can navigate within these little forest areas are just off the road. Lots of terrain you can use to avoid bear paw ease, shadow edge from a dagger. A lot of them will miss their stuff because you can use the terrain to kind of negate their ability to get you an open area. Ganking you is a lot easier. So I've used terrain tons of times, especially in forest areas like these, to prevent gankers from being able to grab you or chase you down. So once you get used to using the terrain and stuff like that, it can be a lot easier to get away from the gankers. And another play could be, well, not right here, but like scraping the walls. A lot of times when you're in zones, keeping, like if you didn't want to run on the road, but you were over here, you could just run along the wall to this next one. Right here might be a gang zone, so you do have to be careful with that. Sometimes you can cut through and then cut off and go right here. You can always just do like, always, always mix up your patterns and stuff like that. And always watch for, if you ever see a red blob on the map, always watch for that. Mo Nine times out of 10, they're mostly going to be ZVZers or large groups doing pve or looking to like they have certain objectives they're doing but if you do see the red circles just avoid them don't get near them uh, if you if you do get near and they have the ability to catch you they'll probably go for it so that's just the best bet is when you do see that red circle just do whatever you can to avoid being near that zone uh, and if you can get out of that if they are hanging out in zone for a while the you should just get out of that zone because they might be spreading out if it dissipates if, if the red circle disappears and they didn't go for an actual door, they might be actually spreading out in that zone. So you need to be very careful with that as well. So we would we would be going for this door. I'm kind of just navigating through right now. And right now I'm set up for PvP and PvE. So if we do if we did want to start farming some mobs, we could just you know eat our fish. So I'm gonna just eat my fish so I have that heal between the fights. I'll pull these two mobs together and take them down. They're going to damage me some, but once they are finally taken down, the fish is going to get my health right back. Just like that. And then we'll go back. We can just keep moving the next mob and just fame farm. That's that's kind of the goal of what the build is that I brought out. But we're also ready to take a fight if we need to. So we put our pork pie on. If we were to take a fight against someone that, you know, someone that's probably solo, obviously we would evaluate the situation. If five people roll up on me, I'm not trying to get involved with that. I'm going to get on my swift claw and get the hell out. But if they are like one person, maybe two... And it's something that, you know, if I'm more experienced with the weapon I'm using and I feel that I can't take the fight, then that's something that I would do. But that just comes down to the type of activities you're doing. Uh, we, we do have a small chest here as well. You can go for small chests. Just know that most of the time there will be some type of conflict on these objectives. Small chests, not as bad, but if you do see medium or large chests, expect some type of guild or larger group to be sitting or they have like a timer running to come back for that. So you do need to be ready most of the time they will be jumping on that chest once they get the chance when it comes to these small chests though like we can go over there and try to grab this small chest the it'll be like a small person conflict so i'm gonna fast forward real quick and i'm gonna get over to that small chest all right we're rolling up on the small chest now I'm going to kind of angle it in a way that I have the top of my screen facing the chest. How we ran in. Someone would probably see us from the right. But a lot of times when you're approaching objectives, your best bet is to come in from the south. So you can see the objective at the top of your screen. You can see more at the top of your screen than you can at the bottom. So if I am running at the chest and it appears at the bottom of my screen, that does give gankers or anyone more time to maybe get a catch on me. 
So a lot of times off the top of your screen or the corners of your screen, if you can if you can come in on an objective at the corner of your screen like I am right now, I have the chest at the corner of my screen. I have the most distance between me and anyone else that might be sitting on the chest. We have it explored. We're going to come over. We're going to check it out. We have 53 seconds left on this. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll keep our mount out. We'll kind of just hang out near it. And if we do see any red names, we do and multiple red names. We're just going to mount up and move away from it because it's just... Better safe than sorry if we see mul multiple names roll up. If it's just one, we're going to click on them. And my inspect button is Y. The Y button, so that's what I'm going to use to inspect. Uh, but we're going to try to get this. The timer on these are three minutes now, so they're relatively easier for solo players to get. Uh, recently, a couple months ago, they were five minutes. So most of the time, there was always groups sitting on these small chests. But now that they're three minutes, it's harder for groups to get a hold on these. We're just going to keep moving around as much as we can. We never want to be standing still, just in case a Shadow Edge or someone is coming out of Invis. Right, we got a blue chest. And 163k. So grab as fast as you can, and then just get mounted up and go. Vacate the area. Someone does know that it was opened when it disappeared on the map. So We're going to run a little bit north here, and then I'm going to zone through the next zone. All right, here's the next zone. We have a medium chest that's going in eight minutes. We have a treasure node that is 7.0 wood. And then we have a crystal spider. These these two, as a solo player and not gathering, don't matter to me. This one could matter. Again, medium chests are probably being sat on or watched by bigger guilds. And there are a lot of arch out here. So most of the time that the zones that I'm in right now are very active. So pushing out farther is all... Pushing deeper into the black zone is always going to be the play that farther out you push, the relatively safer you are from the type of portal shenanigans that's going on. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to press the journey back button. It's only 29,000 for us and it'll take us back to the most recent safe area we were in. So we're just going to back here. We'll pop back up in Marluck portal. We'll take the goods that we got from the small chest and we'll deposit them in our bank and sell them later. That's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned some things about roaming the black zone. Again, this is going to be the first video in the Black Zone roaming series. We're going to have multiple videos coming after this one that'll talk about more things that you need to watch out for and work on when you are roaming in the Black Zone. Different things to look out for. We'll be learning how to inspect. I'll be taking different PvP fights that I took and analyzing them for you guys so that you guys can get an idea of what I'm thinking of, how I'm using terrain, how I'm thinking of the abilities that they have on compared to the build that I'm running, and different just things to look out for, as well as we're going to talk about some type of small group content we're going to talk about when it comes to Avalonian roads. We're going to talk about all different things when it comes to roaming Blackstone content. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see all of you in the next video. And I'll see all of you in Albion online.